And away we go. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen, Lance. You, I can see you, so put stick your thumb up if you can see it. Perfect. So Lawrence has already introduced me. My name is Matt Watkiss. I'm a senior manager at Sport England. Uh, Special Projects is uh, basically a emergency loan and grants program that we're running for elite sport. Previously uh, to that, which was about 18 months ago, I was working as an investment manager for Sport England, um, basically assessing most of the open funds that Sport England have out, um, but also, um, you know, supporting applicants to get to a point where they they can apply but also then get paid um through grants grant money um also used to work with lawrence at british judo so that's how i know lawrence and that's how he's uh, invited me today so uh just to give you a bit of background there yeah um so who sport england are we're an arm's length body um we receive government funding <coughs> so that would be ex uh, classed as exchequer funding um we also a national lottery distributor um the focus of our um grants usually and generally are community sport and physical activity and we distribute uh, just under 300 million pounds of funding per annum that's changed in the last year that figure only because we've been working um with emergency survival funding as well so it's probably doubled that over the last year or so um we're currently in the probably the first year of a new strategy it was launched in 2021 um we're calling this a transition year which ends on the 31st of uh, march 2022 it's a 10-year strategy usually you only get four years uh, in line with um funding cycles um, the focus of these strategies is to transform lives and communities and also adapt and rebuild uh, following the pandemic. There's loads of funding that we've had in the past and I've just kind of included it. Sorry, hey. can, you, can you enlarge your screen because it's just a bit yeah, different. Yeah, of course, yeah. So if you, can, you, can you actually go in the presentations because it look go into the slideshow. So. Yeah, no problem. Then we'll just see the, the the slide that you're talking talking to, right? Yeah, no problem. Is that any better? Uh, actually, no. It's um, it's the same <laughs> thing. Is it? Hold on. I, I, was, I need it. If you if you're looking at the screen, you hit Control and you've got a mouse. If you hit the scroll of the mouse, you can zoom in um, from your computer. If that helps. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can zoom out a little bit more. You can go into presentation mode, Matt. If you go back to the original screen, then down the bottom on the bottom toolbar, next to the slidey thing, there's an icon. That should be presentation. No, the one next to it to the right. Yeah. There we no. go. Yeah, mate. So you learn something new every day. <laughs> Is that any better? Yeah, that's a lot better. Perfect. Well, luckily we've only missed the uh, boring intro bit of who Sport England are, so that's uh, that's fine. This is probably the most important bit um, around what's funding is available. So it's changed considerably due to COVID. Just a, a little disclaimer there, I guess. But pre-pandemic, we had several open grants that were uh, focused on revenue, which would be like, you know, your activities, your equipment kind of focused grants, which called the small grants, which was up to £10,000. And we had a capital, which was building um, fund called the Community Asset Fund. Both of those have changed considerably over the last two years and have changed the focus uh, uh, to return to play. So as the first lockdown finished and closed, they were, they focused the the funding then on to, you know, how clubs, organisations, activities can get back to, you know, some sort of normal. Um, and then you can see here that 
they've completely changed again and we've now got a current fund in the top right hand corner called the Queen's Platinum and Jubilee which is similar to a small grant it's a similar kind of um price like amount of money 300 pounds to 10,000 pounds but the focus is uh, on bringing communities together and tackling inequalities which is in line with our strategy this is a temporary fund. It will be available for the next couple of months in line with the Platinum, Platinum Jubilee. Um, and as I said in the previous slide, it, it's a bit of a transition period at the moment. We're in between strategies, so we will likely have some new open funds come through and we'll have some temporary funds come through, you know, for the couple of a period of a couple of months coming through in the next few probably six to 12 months. Uh, it's a bit unclear at the moment what funding we've got available. So apologies that I'm not going to come to you with with much to, to, to offer at the moment. A lot of it's still kind of recovery and emergency survival for clubs and organisations. But one thing that has kind of remained is um, this concept of great ideas. And it's a it's a very short kind of application process. It's four questions and it's just an opportunity for organizations that have got a project to present that project in the, within those questions um, and it, it it can be pitched in any detail it can be quite short and sweet it can be quite detailed uh, there's no word limit on it and it basically is if you've got a project that's outside of anything that's open you can you can present that via the great ideas platform and uh, there's no limits on to on you know the amount and what happens there is it either gets aligned to a fund that's happening now that's open or it gets aligned to a fund that's coming um if it's if it's, it's similar to that or it will it will go to the various departments within sport england and they will um review it and see if there's any sort of solicita solicitation funding that um they can provide and they'll solicit the the organization that applies and um yeah go through the application process the standard application process that we have um the other one that's probably carried on through is a crowdfunded it's like a match funding campaign uh, where you set up a crowdfunder i don't know if you're aware of crowdfunder as such but it's it's basically like an online fundraiser where you use social media platforms to present to um, promote your your campaign. Um, Crowdfunder UK is the one that we use as a general, but there's others like GoFundMe, which offer um, free free platform to you know put your campaign and raise money. Um, Crowdfunder UK they don't they're not free and others aren't free. They charge like a percentage of your total uh, fundraising part. But actually what they do is they offer a lot more support and advice and you know if you're under your you know what you're predicted to or your target amount then they'll offer you support to be able to you know promote it more widely than you're possibly used to um i don't know how what uh, uh technology is like amongst the group at all um but crowdfunder uk pretty pretty good so they, they do take six percent though which is quite a large chunk but they're, they're very supportive and they have reg regular workshops um and things like that it's it's a decent little uh, match funding program the the crowdfunder uk they also have uh, so we fund them to match fund up to ten thousand pounds but they also link in with like aviva community fund and aviva match fund um, and there's a few other local businesses, or, sorry, national businesses that um, and organisations that match fund as well that they they link in with. So it's worth having a look. I'll share links later on in the slides, so you've got those uh, to the various um, funds that we've got available. But as a as I say, it's a bit slim pickings at the moment. It's only because we're in that transitional period of the strategy. I I envisage that there'll be some form of small grants and we usually have some form of building capital kind of fund as a general rule of thumb how that looks going forward i'm not sure but but i envisage it will be something similar to small grants and the community um asset fund that we've had the only other thing that's the things to mention here on 
this is around the survival focus um, where community emergency fund was like a first lockdown fund which we we, we had 25 million pounds from the government to fund that uh, was very much on operational costs just whatever costs that you have running as an organization that needed support with um, that's now closed the and unlikely to reopen um, but we have got the what is was called the tackling inequalities fund is now the together fund uh, now I'll, I'll go into a bit more detail on active partnerships later on but that we have a, a series of partners mostly active partnerships across the country that work with local clubs organizations to get up to ten thousand uh, pounds funding the focus has been on return to play up to now um, return to play, I mean, is is basically just, you know, getting back to some sort of normal um, activity. But the the focus is very much on tackling inequalities and inequalities can be disability groups that you, you work with. Um, de areas of deprivation, uh, black, Asian, minor minority, ethnic groups. Um, yeah, so they're the kind of focuses within that fund, but very much a you have to have a, like a kind of discussion with the active partnerships or the partners within that that have got the funding um, to you know see and get support, but also see if you know you're eligible for for that fund. Um, and we move on to the next slide because there's not much to offer, but Lawrence. Can you see if anyone's got any questions or has anyone got any questions on any of those? Apologies that it's a bit vague on that. I've, like I said, it's, it's just because that transitional period of the strategy, it would probably have a lot more meat to the bone in a year's time for some for funding workshops. No? Um, no. OK. OK, so this slide's just a funding links um, slide. As you can see, we've got Sport, Sport England um, hyperlinked there, um, which basically has a series of open and ad hoc funds currently available. Uh, some might be available that are new this week that I'm not aware of on the slides. So it's worth having a look on that site. Um, it's also got you know, support and uh, other ways of generating funding advice um, on there. And we've also got a funding helpline and a email address that you can contact Sport England with at uh, any point. The, the, the funding usually is if you've seen something and you just want some more support or advice, drop, just pick up the phone or drop an email over to the team. They're really helpful. They they assess and they're part of the, the application process and decision making. So they're very, very up to, you know, scratch with what's going on at Sport England in terms of funding, probably more so than myself. Um, but yeah, they you know, they, they're there to help. So please have a look. And if you see anything that, you know, you think you might be able to tap into, please give them a shout. But also I'm sure Lawrence not dropping a minute a little bit, but he's there as well to offer you support. <laughs> um, and then you've got your active partnerships. Now this is England focused. Um, mostly, I think Ireland have a similar setup, uh, Lawrence was telling me, but basically there are regional offices that are funded by Sport England. They've got on their website a, like a funding portal uh, where you can, you know, scroll through local and national and regional funds from uh, Sport England are on there but from them to you know local tips that offer funds to um, charities that offer you know ad hoc infrequent funding it there's hundreds on there that you can have a look at um, and each active partnership should have the same portal. I think they use the same portal across the board, but I think you can then filter it so it becomes a bit more regional, um, really useful. But the, the best thing about the active partnerships is they've got a development and funding team there that can support. And I would 
I would recommend if you haven't already done so, building a relationship with the active partnership, whether that's just signing up to their newsletters or attending workshops, uh, meeting the development team. If you've got a project in, in mind, then contact them and just say, look, I've got this project in mind. Is there any support that you can offer? You know, some are better than others, as Lawrence can vouch, but you know, they they some have got a lot lot larger area to co to cover, but they're they're there to support and you know that that's their role um to get more of that local focused um support that Sport England can't offer. Is there any questions on active partnerships or funding at all? I think when when we're talking about active partnerships, obviously, as, as Matt said, that's a that's an English thing. There is a similar um, set up in Ireland within the 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 Irish counties, as it were. Um, but Northern Ireland, Wales, and Scotland, most most uh, most counties and districts will have sports development units, and they will have something similar. So it's just it's 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 looking at what's available locally to you. One of the, as I say, one of the things about the active partnerships is they do have people who are um, uh, experienced in making funding applications within them so mm -hmm. so I, I would if ever you're thinking about making a funded application I would always engage with with your local development team whether that whichever country that that it is um, and making sure they have a look at what you're applying to do so that you're you're um, at the very least hitting the hitting the targets the sort of targets that the the funders are, are looking for you to do um, obviously I can I can do that for you as well but uh, but there is there is somebody local to you who could who perhaps will have more, a bit more local knowledge about uh, what's going on thanks Lawrence and then Lawrence has just included some useful links for Scotland Wales Northern Ireland and Ireland there as well um Mostly TNL community funds, which is across the board. You can you can mm. select the region, which would be the the country. Sorry, um, in particular, um, not got much to add on this slide. I don't know if you've got anything additional, Lawrence, at all that you can add. Uh, no, no. But as, again, I'm sure that what Matt what Matt said about the, I mean, he mentioned your local tip um, as being a yeah. possible fund which is people think what um, but um, a lot of the people who a lot of the companies who, who run in landfills um, part of of their uh, of them getting that contract is 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 community is is assisting and developing their community so uh, off the top of my head I can't for the life of me remember the name of the one <laughs> that, that we that we use but or have used but uh, um, but they they have a a community grant scheme which which in 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 some respects if it, it is actually easier than some of Sport England they're slightly less um, yeah. uh, less picky shall we say about some of the stuff um, so for example Sport England in their in their in some of the schemes that won't fund equipment or or um, uh, facility hire. Whereas sometimes the, the the local funders will do, so it's it's looking and seeing yeah. what each one will and won't fund. I, I think that's right. I think Sporting are very hot on criteria, whereas your your local funders tend to have like a very broad range of you know what they can and can't fund, and I think it stems from the distributor, which is. For Sport England, it's um, government and lottery, so they put you know a lot of the criteria within, but it also has to link to the strategy. Whereas you know your landfill sites won't. There's a few others that you can tap into, like Co-op, uh, Aviva Community Fund. I mentioned earlier, they do obviously the crowdfunder, but they've had they have regular funds. Um, the council is worth as well uh, contacting because they have Section 106. You have to get them at the right time. Um, you know, but if there's a if there's a housing, um, you know, estate being built around your area, it's worth, you know, contacting the council and just saying, you know, what 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 section one hundred six fund, fund funding have you got available? Um, because that's got to go to communities. I think it's like one percent of the total cost Something that like goes that. to community. Um, so yeah, yeah, they're they're they're. A useful 
kind of funders and regular funders those um you get the random ones that come through uh that you know do it one one off you know they might get a little bit of money and then you know they they can they can distribute but yeah, Liz, but, Liz has got a question. I think she's got a hand up. Yeah, go for it. Uh, it's not so much a question, actually, as a, as a comment. Um, I actually work for a council, and um, whenever there's like a new development, then they actually um, do. You know, sometimes the development does have to give funding, as it were. But things like um, in my area, Hinkley Point's being built, so Hinkley Point's got funding available for community type projects, and the Bristol airport has um pots of money as well for community activity for you know mitigating the you know sort of like specific communities that airplanes fly you know fly over and things so yeah. there are you know things like that that are available and they're usually not too onerous to actually apply for mm -hmm. but you know our problem though is actually meeting the criteria to apply for you know we, we don't actually meet in the areas where there is the activity do you, <laughs> you know where the funding's available so you know Bridgewater would be a really good place to do some life-saving it's part of Hinkley Point it's an area of deprivation but there is no life-saving at the moment that happens there do you okay. yeah do you know what I mean it's a bit of a chicken and egg sort of situation mm -hmm. so we can't get that money as our life-saving club because we're not in the catchment area mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> but the yeah. money's like kind of there I think it's it's difficult for Sport England funding as well in the past where it's been focused on new activity, new participants to the sport or, you know, the activity. And you, you're, I assume your focus would be on, you know, more retention. You're retaining swimmers into qualifications. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Apologies if I am. But yeah, Sport England's probably been quite restrictive in the past. But I, I would keep an eye out and, you know, the, the option is always there for great ideas. And, you know, if you feel that that's like an, it's almost like an entry point into, you know, further applications, if there's something available and you're not quite sure whether you meet the criteria, try it on great ideas. They might put you through to that, that there, open fund. Is there any opportunity for headquarters to actually apply for any money, you know, like for, uh, you know, not just clubs, but, you know, are they able to? Apply for grants to to disseminate. Dis I know they got some money um, through Sporting, was it through Sport England for some of the pool lifeguarding kind of stuff. So just when you know that kind of stuff's really good as well. You know, like if a governing body can get the funding and then can distribute it to clubs. I think that's something that that I don't know. Maybe in the past was possible. Um, I may be wrong here. My my impression is that Sport England are moving a little bit away from the funding of governing bodies that's am i would i be wrong there matt that, no no you, you're kind of wrong i guess in the sense that they're not moving away from governing bodies at all yeah. they, they, they've they've called it system partners and um they don't want to just ring fence people into national governing bodies so they can fund other partners that meet you know the the, the strategy um, but... I think if, if 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 head office came up with a a coherent plan to um, uh, develop a program that encouraged sixteen to twenty five year old um, young no. <laughs> no, sixteen to twenty five year old young people who who currently were not active or not particularly active into into a life saving program. Um, that that would be something that maybe we could uh, go to Sport England with and say, this is the program that we're looking to to put into place and maybe come up. Would I be would I, would I correct there, Matt? Yeah, it's certainly yeah. something that you could, yeah. you would have a nominated person within the core market team um, within Sport England that would pick up, or there'll be an email address that that they would pick up, and you would you would pitch you know a proposal to them and start the conversation with them from there yeah. um yeah it, it's difficult because i'm not sure exactly you know who they funded so far and who they haven't it's uh, only just been announced that they've funded 40 organizations and that's only in wave one so there's potentially a couple more waves of funding going on for just general governing bodies 
um, funding. So yeah, and the other thing would be, um, you know, obviously, if if groups of life saving club in an area were to to join together to do an activity, um, you know, is there an opportunity through, you know, like in Somerset through the Somerset branch to apply for funding? You know, so that would be, um, you know, that isn't that's. So, you know, we, we as Somerset, we could actually apply for doing something in Bridgewater, which, you know, is an area of deprivation, which is, um, which has no life-saving activity at the moment. I mean, if we came up with some kind of brilliant program, then, you know, rather than it being a club-based thing, we have to be more of a, a local, um, you know, um, body of thing, as it were. That may well come down to how the that group was set up and constituted. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. Mm. You see, so yeah. I I have uh, a what a long time ago been successful in getting a grant for a, a basketball development group, um, which was covered Corby, Oundle, and Thrapston, which are three towns in in Northamptonshire. Um, that was through awards for all, and awards for all has changed since then. Um, so I, I don't think it's I don't think it's impossible, um, uh, but you have you have to show a need, and you have to, and the group has to be pop, you know, con properly constituted. So so it's something that it's something that we you know that we we could discuss. Uh, I think it's something that you would you would certainly have a chat with your local active partnership about, mm -hmm. um, and. But you know, I, I don't. I don't think it's you know, it's um, it's completely out. It's out of the question by no. any means. No, no, and it probably brings me on to the next slide in terms of if you did identify a funding program that you you know you could potentially apply to, um, and you meet the criteria. The focus of the project meets you know, tackling inequalities as such as in Sport England's focus at the moment. Then you you could you could potentially come in and it wouldn't have to just be a club by club each club applies if you could add a cluster as a regional that uh, um, office or you know area that wanted to apply on their behalf then you know if the money can get out to various areas it's probably more preferable for a funder to do that than it would be to just focus on one slight area um but you know, if 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 the area wanted to do that for Bridgewater, say, and there, it was an area of deprivation, and they they wanted to focus activity there, um, particularly on you know unengaged young people, then that would be a that would be a good focus for for an application. I think the difficulty you got at the moment is what what would that you know how what fund would you be able to do that for um, a sport small sport England small grants would have been ideal it's just whether the the jubilee fund would be um you know a focus bringing communities together potentially yep um uh, tackling inequalities yep it, it sounds like it would you know meet that and if you've got that sort of project in mind and you can provide a reasonable pitch then give the fund line a call and see see what they say to it they're they're the experts on that fund so they would be able to advise um but to me, from assessing small grants, it would be something that we would have potentially funded in the past. Is is satellites club still a? No, that was always active partnerships. The satellite clubs, we we provided the money towards active partnerships to manage those. No, they they, they stopped several years ago. Um, satellite funding. I don't know if any active partnerships still do it, but fund it through other avenues i'm not sure but yeah that for anyone that doesn't know that was like up to three grand i think it was wasn't it lawrence for um additional venues so as a club or organization you'd be the hub of that you know that project and that 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 um and then you'd have set up a satellite venue as such somewhere else whether in a school or a different location community center leisure center um another life-saving um, headquarter and you would set up a new activity for that um, and you would receive funding and in my my opinion I, I quite enjoyed that that fund as a development manager at British Judo it was quite handy to have wasn't it Lawrence to you know be able to tap into 
particularly for like after school clubs and things like that it was great but i think money dried up in the last cycle and then um yeah they've not renewed that they've changed focus um, and then I've just included a slide here just for non-funding support, which just focuses on like Club Matters, which is like an online tool for organisations and volunteer organisations. They do a di like a diagnostic tool uh, where you can answer a series of questions and then it identifies like areas that you might want to focus on and provides recommendations, videos, resources that, you know, can support you through. But it's also really handy for like if you if you were to apply to Sport England and they come back and say that you're you're not fully constituted or we need a we need a conflict of interest statement within your constitution, you could go on to Club Matters and you could search conflict of interest and it would come up with a template like um document or some some wording towards that effect so that you can you know replicate and fill in the gaps um so it's a useful tool yeah i've had a look um at the other home countries in ireland for that um scotland have uh, something called actify um, um wales actually have club matters um by the same it's welsh club matters but it's by the same uh, company does the 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 english one um uh, ireland don't really have anything uh, okay. similar Similar to that either in Ireland. In, or in all honesty, if it's just a simple search, I want a document or I want a resource to support my application. If it's like a delivery uh, plan template that you wanted to add in as an attachment, or if it's a um, like a timeline that you wanted to add in, and then go on the the resources section, see if it's available, and just take it off there. Club Matters. It's an online tool. It's you don't have to log in as such no. to get get those sort of things they're just easily downloadable so it wouldn't wouldn't matter if you're from Ireland uh, it was only if you wanted to use the diagnostic I think that you would probably have to provide a bit more detail um, to be able to use it and if you wanted to attend workshops as well they might you might they, they might ask some questions on some of them but there's loads of tutorials and you know recordings on there as well that you can use uh, so you wouldn't you wouldn't have any issues accessing it and then the other ones are just like about campaigns, but inside Active Live Service, handy for um, data. If you wanted to put in your application some sort of data to support your local area or your your activity, and you feel that you know it's compelling within your application and relevant to what you're applying for, but also as a as a supporting argument for why you, why the funder should fund you, then the Active Lives data is reasonably useful um for swimming as such you know you'd be able to access you know demo demographic data uh, to support your application sorry um sorry apologies stuff's just fallen off my walls which doesn't isn't great when you're presenting <laughs> um i'll move on to the next slide but that's there for you just to have a look at the the other two things this girl can and we are undefeatable just look, look like campaigns that we're running um in parallel to you know the the rest of the work that we're doing at sport england um and you know they, they've got some useful resources um for their focuses this girl can obviously uh females um in sport and, and physical activity there's, there's loads of resources there to you know promotional um resources that you can use uh, to tap in um and then that this will be probably the last slide for me because i'll probably chewed your ears off for 40 or 40 odd minutes but i think this is probably the most important if you do get to a point where you found a a fund that you feel like you, you you could apply for and you feel that your project really meets it then you know these are some small considerations but also these are kind of some of the things that i would have looked for whilst assessing applications in the past but the, the top bit is just the importance and apologies from teaching you to suck eggs here it's very much you know read the criteria check you that you're eligible um and if not you know and you're not sure contact your active partnership contact you know the the, the funding body they should have a, a fund line or an email address that you can you know go to 
and just get that that advice and you know you, you can pitch you know what your your project is and it helps them to understand you know what what you're trying to propose and then you know it will help you know them provide you know relevant feedback and most of them will be fairly honest and say yeah it probably isn't eligible um and they might be able to direct you to some other funds particularly active partnerships they might be able to they might be able to add, um or the development teams uh, the relevant development teams that you know within your areas they would be able to divert you towards you know the the right sort of funding um, and then the considerations whilst you get to that point where you're writing an application, we always, you know, at Sport England looked at need, impact, sustainability. Need would be, you know, why is your project needed? What what demand is there in the community for your project? What research have you undertaken? So whether that would be a survey, uh, consultations within your area, um, have you got a waiting list? You know, they 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 show an evidence that you've got potential impact for the project. Um, the need also focuses on, you know, what partnerships, charities, local agencies, schools, you know, how are you going to get people through the door? Um, and you know, referrals up at the top, but actually it's probably more relevant to the wider focus. Referrals, you know, through local agencies and charities is really helpful. You know, we've got a referral partnership with X, Y, and Z. It could be a local swimming club, it could be a local school. Um, they they refer children to our club or organization, but also referrals from you know local doctors and things like that are quite useful um particularly for those that are, you know trying to get um focus on people that are unengaged and inactive um and they 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 you know they they're not easy to get but you can simply just go to your local doctors and ask that question would you refer patients to to us would you could go to the local charities would you refer people um particularly with you know, mental health charities would you refer them to um and you know your local schools and your local swimming clubs just ask the question see if they'll you, you can form them partnerships and then the data surrounding you know the criteria of the 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 fund is important to to provide within that need as well so when they talk about local and national demographic data the government will have that on their website on um, on gov.co.uk and they will provide, you know, deprivation data through postcode searches. Um, you know, the 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 physical health of your local area, but also nationally. And you can sometimes get the data then to link into, you know, the the activity that you're providing. Um, use if you've got it through your your ngb or lawrence has data as well get it off him and use it within the application link it to the criteria and then the last two impacts the obvious one you know how are you going to grow your your activity you know your your participation and um, what target group or to groups you know are you you um focusing on within the project proposal and how will you meet that demand that you've created? You know, you'll run three, four qualifications within a three, four week period. And, you know, providing that, you know, that you've got, you know, waiting lists to to do it, then, you know, you'll run a series of them again, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then the last one, sustainability, you know, this, this can go twofold. It, it could be, the first focus on you know those revenue projects which will be like activity growth kind of participation focused projects you know how are you going to fund that project after the funding runs out you need to i you need to highlight that within an application but then for building works and things like that you know to focus on maintenance how are you going to maintain if it's a building how are you going to maintain that building? How are you going to replace, you know, the, anything through wear and tear? Um, but also, you know, if the building's got a calf and you've got a kitchen area, how are you saving up? What sinking fund have you got, you know, to 
um, replace that in the future? You know, if the boiler goes, how are you going to replace that? We call it a sinking fund. Um, I don't know if that's a bit too with a life saving organization, sinking funds, the right word in for that, but it's, um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely something that they look for, but also how are you going to raise that money? Whether it's, I wouldn't say that you're evidencing that you're going to apply for more funding from other organizations or the same organization is probably a good thing to put in an application. But if you're running regular fundraisers, you know, you're looking at, you know, crowdfunding online, um, you've you've got partners sponsorship you know that's coming in and you you can evidence that i'm not saying that you need to get letters from but sometimes they help you know support in letters um attached to applications from sponsors local businesses partners and even if it's you know local community groups that just want to say look they're doing fantastic work and um we want to we want to support them then get those letters in as attachments and i guess that doesn't really link in just to sustainability it links into all of the above you know if you can evidence through you know supporting letters then that's great for for an application i think that mostly covers up you know the the main focus is from my point of view you know what i used to look for in applications it, it varies obviously depending on what what kind of fund we're providing but they're kind of like the generic things and I, I really hope that that's helpful and I've not just gone and told you a load of stuff that you already knew um fingers crossed that I've I've provided at least one thing today that you know could help you in the long run um that's that's the end of my slides but I'm more than happy to take questions from everybody do you mind if I just unshare the screen now Lawrence so I can see everyone's yes, faces again that's fine yeah thank yeah. you Okay, so any questions for Matt before we before he disappears? <laughs> no? Yes? No, no, no. Okay, well, um well thanks very much, Matt. I mean I as I said said before, um for m uh, most of you apart from Sheena. Um, who's obviously um, in Scotland, the, the, the active partnerships um, would be a really key contact if, if you're thinking about any sort of grant applications, any sort of uh, looking for any sort of funding. They, they have um, uh, money um, that they, they can um, distribute. Um, when I was looking at developing something in Northamptonshire, I, I went along and they were happy to, to, to give me a thousand pounds um, if I got something up and running, we didn't get anything up and running, so I didn't take the money. Um, but um, you know, they have, they do have pot, pots of money that they they can distribute fairly simply. So they would, be, they would certainly be a key one. Um, but as Matt said, you know, if you if you're making a grant application, you know, there are those key things to look at. You know, what are the criteria? You know, and get get one of somebody to have a look at your bid um, don't just stick it in both Matt and myself have seen examples of where people have put bids in um, uh, that have got rejected and they've come back and said why on earth did they reject this and you read it and you think yeah I can see why because you haven't you haven't matched your your grant bid against the criteria that they're asking for so um, if there are no other questions if there's nothing else um, as I said this is recorded um, I'm going to stop recording it now um, it will be available on the website um, at the same place um, as uh